Hello, hello. This is Matt from Whatcast here. This all kicking off uh, again with COVID misinformation, etc. claims. Now, this is Joe Rogan. Everybody doesn't need any introduction. Everybody knows who Joe Rogan is. Biggest podcast in the world, bar none. I don't care what your opinion of it is. And he has recently had on uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., uh, the nephew of the ex, you know, the ex-president JFK. And he, uh, they were discussing many things. They were discussing mobile phones and things like this and dangers of, you know, radiation, whatever, from Wi-Fi, etc. And they was also discussing vaccines, not just COVID vaccines, all vaccines, right? But I'll be careful what I say about vaccines. Got my own vaccine stories of my own. But uh, so Kennedy was giving his opinion about the vaccines. Of course, you're going to get people then immediately point out the how that that's misinformation, dangerous anti-vax stuff and all this other stuff where people immediately jump on and start trying to pile on because they've been able to for the last few years of trying to incriminate anybody that goes against the narrative of what we're supposed to think when certain words are uttered. Uh, anti-vax equals bad and all this sort of stuff right now. I'm not an expert. I've got my opinions, but I wouldn't claim to know what the fuck I'm talking about. And this is the problem, right? Robert Kennedy's gone on there. He's done some research. Yes, he's not a doctor and, and all of the other things that are being, uh, he's being accused of being a, a conspiracy theorist and whatever. But he's obviously got a bit of an idea and got his opinions from somewhere. So how do we sort this out then? So there's a guy called, let's, let's have a quick look here. So there's a guy called... Uh, Peter Hortez, I believe. This is a doctor, right? Uh, and he immediately jumped on uh, the bandwagon here uh, when he watched the show. He's been a guest on Rogan himself in the past a couple of times. So it's not like, well, Rogan never has people on. this always has these fascist anti-vaxxers and all this stuff on. That's what everybody tries to come out with. This bloke has been on a couple of times himself. This Peter Hortez, right? And he's weighed in on it and basically said, Robert Kennedy is a conspiracy theorist. Snow Watch, it's very dangerous misinformation. He shouldn't be taken seriously. Joe Rogan has responded uh, to these accusations. That, that, let's see what he's wrote first. So this is um, Professor Peter Hortez, MD, PhD. So he has wrote, Spotify has stopped even sort of trying to stem Joe Rogan's vaccine misinformation. It's really true uh, just awful. And from all the online attacks I'm receiving after this absurd podcast, it's clear many actually believe this nonsense. So it's pretty clear there. This is all nonsense. It shouldn't be taken seriously. Disinformation, misinformation, blah, blah, buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. Uh, Joe Rogan has responded. Peter, if you claim what RFK Jr. is saying is misinformation... I am offering you $100,000 to the charity of your choice if you are willing to debate him on my show with no time limit. I mean, it usually goes three hours or so anyway on Rogan's podcast, so that's that's a big enough time limit, I think, for any debate. But anyway, um, th not only has he said that, so since, the, since he's made the $100,000 uh, to charity offer, everybody's up to it. It's now in the million, over a million, I believe, right, for, for this debate to happen. Um... Peter Hortez is not the person for the task. The man's a steady stream of incorrect COVID-19 posts. So everyone's weighing in on their, their opinions about whether this uh, debate should happen. Right. But from Hortez himself, even though he's gone on to that Mehdi Hussein or his name's show immediately to explain why he's not going to take this offer. I'm not going to have this debate because I'm just... Um, I'm just going to make him look more credible by having the debate. That these stupid excuses they come out with. Right, it's a debate. Now, if you're a reasonable thinking person, I agree in the premise. I agree with kind of what he's saying is that lots of people have already made their mind up and you're not going to be able to sway them. But there's going to be people you can sway. If you've got all the evidence and all the science and everything on your side, even if you sway a tiny number of Joe Rogan's audience on people that would never his audience before that will watch that because it's such a discussion that needs to be had, right? It's been needing for years and people will go watch it to check it out, to see 
what what stacks up here who's telling the truth here you've got the anti-vax side over here you've got science follow the science people over here it's always twitter arguments let's have an actual debate on the biggest platform in the world the guy has jumped in on it already uninvited he's decided to jump in on it on the twitter and get involved and now he's been offered a debate he's saying i don't want to do that i'm just empowering him by doing that but you've already involved yourself peter He's, so what you mean is you don't mind typing about it on the Twitter, but you don't want to go on Rogan's show and actually talk about it because you might look like a fucking idiot. You might not. You know, it's not for me to say what's going to happen. If if you went on that show and you made your case as easily as you said you, as, as obviously as you said you can, and decimated this guy, honest people would actually say, you know what? I either believe what Kennedy said less now, but I still believe him, but it's not as convincing as it was. Or they'll say, that guy's talking shit. I'm, I'm going to rethink my worldviews here about vaccines. If it, if it would be as easy as you say, then that's what could potentially happen. And let's not forget the money over a million dollars to the charity of your choice just for turning up and taking this debate. Everybody making excuses for this guy. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it. But he's gone on. He's already gone on other shows to make his excuses. Right. It doesn't make any sense to me uh, that, it, that he can make. It's just cowardice. Get on it. He's been on there himself with no opposition. Kennedy's now been on himself with no opposition. Joe Rogan is just an everyday guy that's got no no knowledge of this. He just listens to what he's told, like a lot of us. And uh, it's now time, I believe, that you should actually get on there a, a platform of some description, even if you want to get a fact-checking moderator to sit there and fact-check in real time what people are saying. Let's do it. Let's get it done. Let's have this conversation. Let's stop making ridiculous excuses as to why you can't have this conversation. And now he's claiming he's being bullied. And as people have pointed out over and over again to him, you've been bullied. What about the vaccines you've been pushing for the last two years and forcing people to take against their will? Is that not bullying? I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Cheers. What do you think about this? Whose side are you on? If you're going to actually, if people are going to say that uh, the debate is quite right to not have this debate, give your reasons why it's okay to try and have a debate and in, in, interject yourself into the situation on Twitter. But when actually asked to face to face debate it, when you may end up, you know, if your evidence is as strong as you say it is, and these are just nutcase conspiracy theories, and you're trying to make out as well that Rogan is somehow, he's, it's his opinion. He's just listened to the guy. He wouldn't get involved. And even if he did, bring your mate with you. Bring so, There's so many other people. I'll go and do it. Like nobody doctors and no one gives a fuck about. Bring one of them on and they can sit there and you can have a two on two if you want. Let's just have the conversation. The way that people try to make out that it's bad to involve themselves in a debate, it's not worth it. And like the way that the left and all the people on his side, I've been reading this today, they're all talking about how they're leaving Twitter. They're leaving Twitter because it's no longer the platform for them. What they mean is there's now two sides. It's now a, a, an open debate on Twitter. You don't get banned for having the incorrect opinions anymore. So where are they going? They're all going to somewhere called tribal, apparently. Like you couldn't fucking make it up. Tribal. I mean, you laugh at Truth Social for Trump, which is just as ridiculous in my opinion. Their one that they've made up is called Tribal. You might as well call it Echo Chamber and be done with it. I'm Matt. Listen to the listen to the podcast, Whatcast, wherever you get your podcast. Cheers. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please subscribe, etc., etc. Adios for now.